Rome. Is this the most beautiful city in Italy? We're about to find out. It's my first time visiting and I'm incredibly excited. I have the pleasure of being a guest of Panerai, which for any of you that aren't familiar, Panerai are the Italian watchmaker. And we've been given some incredible access, at least I'm led to believe. And our trip is going to start off tomorrow with a eternal city tour where we're going to be jumping on bikes and we're going to be hopefully seeing some new and less discovered perspectives of this marvellous city. The history of Rome has great depths and I'm sure it's going to be fascinating to learn and also see so much of this beautiful city. I am well aware that you are not supposed to have favourites, but I've said it for a very long time now that Italy has to be my favourite European destination to holiday. I think that it offers a huge diverse range of beautiful locations that vary drastically and all offer beautiful food, wonderful people, incredible wine and just differing landscapes that you can enjoy depending on what it is that you're looking for. And city breaks, I would say, always come secondary to me in terms of when I think of a holiday, I often think of beaches and being near the water. However, I think that places like Rome are just on another level. Of course, they're non-comparable, but just it's going to be quite the experience. I don't think I've ever been to a city that's been this historical. I know that over the course of our stay, we're going to be going to the Vatican and we have lots of secrets to discover with Panerai. Panerai offer a insight into the Italian culture and the Italian way. They of course have lots of history themselves with their connections with the Italian Navy and so I'll talk to you more about why we're here and showcase some of the watches um, that Panerai offer and of course get up close and personal with the Panerai Radio Mir annual calendar Platinum Tech Edition, which this whole experience is being named the Annual Calendar Experience, and it's all about discovery and getting unique access to the city of Rome. And so I'm gonna get some shut eye and we'll pick up tomorrow where our adventure begins. Well, good morning. We're just in the lifts about to head off to the Hotel de la Ville, and we're gonna be doing a scooter tour around Rome. It should be a great way of seeing the city. Let's go. <laughs> Well, we've just arrived to jump on our Vespers and I'm part of the submersible group. These are our drivers lined up, ready to go. It is a beautiful day. We've been absolutely spoiled out here in Rome. Right, let's go get busy. Wanna take a look? Well, it's incredibly noisy in here, but this is the first look at the Panerai Radio Mir annual calendar, and it looks absolutely phenomenal. Look at that. It's got this absolutely stunning green face, and you can see that it's got the months around the edge of the dial. It's got that iconic cushion casing with the slim lugs holding in the strap. An absolute masterpiece. We have got a very small amount of time to enjoy wearing this watch and shoot it until we get back onto the Vespers and so I'm going to get busy with that but what a masterpiece. Oh no way! <laughs> I've never seen it before. Okay we've got backstage access literally. That is crazy! <laughs> Okay, this is one perspective that I'm pretty confident most of you... Oh, someone's just proposed! Yay! We've got it on camera. Oh, how sweet. How magical. Okay, well not only have we just seen a proposal, we've also got insane access. As promised, unreal. Thank you. 
a part of it. Haven't had one of these done in a very long time. Be, be brutal with me. I have just been wearing a helmet for a very long time, I think. Tom Cruise, Mr. Bean. If I look anything like Mr. Bean, you're in trouble. <laughs> okay. He's oh, this is very generous of you. <laughs> he could have gone in on me then, and he's very kind. He's been told to be kind, hasn't he? <laughs> Please don't upset anyone. I'm just about to butcher this, but we've just stopped off at Palazzo Brancaccio, which is this beautiful property situated in the heart of Rome. There is literally like a tropical forest with parakeets flying around to the left and then we have this amazing water fountain in front of us and the palazzo behind us over here. And that is a lemon tree that I can get down with. Ciao ragazzi. Ciao ragazzi. I'm Ali Garden. Tutto bene. Sono molto felice di essere a Roma. Okay, we've just arrived to the Colosseum and it is a beautiful evening and we have got a very special treat in store. We're just about to make our way through into the underground of this magnificent place. First time visiting, obviously, and I'm being spoiled. Panerai do get some access, let me tell you. Welcome to the Colosseum. Oh, give me some Italian, we need some Italian now. Welcome guys <laughs> for our little things here in Rome. <laughs> <laughs> An answer is just the people that is well trained to fight against to an animal. After that, during the lunch time, we will have watched the executions of the phonies. And just in the last part of the day, the Ludus Magnus. But nowadays, if you want to watch just a concert, you don't start with a huge star in the first phase of the day. Even in Busta, it's the same thing. The main star just plays in the last part of the show. People get inside into the stadium, just as like we do nowadays. Now we are just in the podium, just for us, we are alone. What you have watched in the best. Is it true or not? They have just placed it into the ludus, the barracks of the gladiators. There was not just one bar, but several barracks just on the other side of the street. Which the gladiators. And tonight is just still for us. Yeah. It's empty. One of the four squares inside which the animals were driven down little by little utilize their cages inside the cages. Atmosphere around us will change little by little. Because when you understand that 
Animals, but animals cannot live here under the sun. Why? Well, welcome to dinner this evening at Alfredo's. You been busy in here, sir? Hi, good evening. Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Vladimir experience associated with the annual calendar is a pleasure to every year from uh, all over the world because we were discussing with a few of you. Uh, clients, press, uh, talents from uh, all over the world, from uh, uh, Germany, London, uh, Singapore, Malaysia. Did like book out so much? Every single person is so good. I mean, I have the smell. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, this is next level. I think I'm gonna to have to up my pasta game at home. I just feel like it's just gonna split open really nicely. Oh, look at that. Alfredo. Well, as you can see, I've just got back to my room and on my bed is a lovely bag of Alfredo's original fettuccine with the Alfredo sauce. I have no excuses now but to cook this for Lydia and I'm probably not going to do anywhere near as well as they did in the restaurant this evening. But how funny is that? I've actually got the ingredients and the dish to prepare that at home after my remark earlier. I had no idea this was gonna be in here. That's so funny and very kind. Well, good morning. Welcome to day two of Rome. I didn't really get an opportunity to talk to you yesterday, but oh my gosh, what an incredible experience it was. My first time visiting Rome and we got backstage access to La Fontana di Trevi, which is that famous water fountain, the face of Rome. And so that was quite the experience. We then went and had a tour of the underground section of the Colosseum it was absolutely magical and fascinating as well to hear some of the stories about the Roman Empire and some of the ongoings and also to learn a little bit more about the construction around the Colosseum as well because obviously there's so much emphasis on the Colosseum itself but there were some incredible buildings that were situated right at the foot of the Colosseum as well which were very relevant um, to the gladiators and to that history so a fantastic day we then finished off our evening at Alfredo's which was beautiful the pasta was phenomenal as I mentioned yesterday so we thoroughly enjoyed that but today we're going to continue discovering more of Rome we're going to be going to a few places today that I'm unfortunately not going to be able to share in great depth they're private homes and so we'll see what we can do today but it's going to be very interesting to kind of see some of the more residential properties here in Rome, I guess. And uh, as always, I'll do my best to capture as much as I can whilst being respectful to the residents of Rome. So anyway, we are going to go downstairs. I've grabbed myself the Radio Mir annual calendar, again with the green dial, absolutely beautiful watch. And so we're gonna go and discover Rome and meet the rest of the team, so let's go. Just to think, yesterday we had this place to ourselves. It's crazy. No. Oh. To remember our time in Rome. <laughs> Okay, so we've just arrived to the art studio, nestled in the centre of Rome. Yeah, so we've got a balcony going on. Maybe I can start speaking about City of Art. So I'm looking at my 360. Yeah, that's it. Alright, stopping for a quick coffee and some snacks. Only the best treats in Italy. Yeah. 
to hold it. Also, this one is. Yeah, yeah I just saw you walk up. Yeah. 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 This one is yours. I do a series with with a paper, wood paper. This is this is this is what I was yes. envisioning. This time. Yes, in sixteenth century, you see, they're yeah. trying to write something yeah, yeah. in stone. Okay. It's very nice. Yeah, beautiful. Have you seen this? The script from the 16th century? I think it's 16th century. Hanging in the balance still. That's what all suspension is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. This is and there is a big one that has done with mold. Oh, really? We really mold. In here? Yes, let me show this one. There's a big one. This one has mold. I produce it in a grave. I work with a mouth with the mold yeah. and then clean it and it's very good. And then do you, have, do you have to seal it to lock it in or will the mold keep on growing? No, 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 not active. Not yeah, yeah, yeah. Because my mold can be quite dangerous for us. So yes, for the yeah. tools, for the target. That's beautiful. Well, we've just come down into the basement of this resident home and they've discovered a mosaic which is the same mosaic in Katagena in Africa and it's believed to be first century. So, the staircase now. Now, here we have plenty of doubts. Mind your walk, huh, guys? But, but, what you guys are seeing in front of you is possibly. Now, here, of course, you find something like that. We are in a totally different scenario than what you experienced before. Before, we were on top of a public building, which was the theater, a theater, right? So we have plenty of historical evidences, plenty of historians that tell us about that. Yes. These used to be, since the beginning, something way more intimate. So we are basically inside someone's house, right? Wow. And who was this someone? Very, very hard for us to know, right? So we found some of the things that I was showing you uh, on display were, of course, could be helpful for us in order to understand. But what helped us the most are the logos put on top of the bricks. So okay. what I can tell you is that this one was possibly an entrance door of a condominium. Ancient Romans could build uh, um, condominiums up to four floors. The last one, uh, the top floor was in wood. Right. Okay. Now, very often what used to happen was that a condominium was for a working class people. And uh, as in the case of this hill, again, I don't know which uh, uh, route you did with the car, but we're very close to the downtown, to the Colosseum, right? Mm -hmm. So at the beginning, of life of the hill that's in the Republican period, the centuries BC, this was an area mainly inhabited by working class, people in trade, we're also quite close to the river, yes. to the Tiber. And then, as very often it ha happened, because of, of the proximity with the imperial house, the condominium got reused and part of it got buried, like as you can see over there, and reuse this foundation for a newer building built on top, right? Yeah. So the newer building built on top was possibly a fortress, possibly a private house of a Praetorian, which was a private guard of the emperor. Of you knowing Latin, you guys are gonna translate this for me. Oh, why you come on? <laughs> come on I'm the least Latin speaking person Who in the room. can read Latin. So bits of it is also quite ruined, but of course, I was joking, I'm not gonna get you translating it. Yeah, I just wanna probably. highlight you on the reason why. Why are you so sure that this is an urn? Because of the inscription DM, which stands for in the hands of God. Wow. This manibus was wow. in Latin, the inscription. And then it tells us about two twin brothers, yeah. uh, which were buried, buried, yeah, kept yeah. together in that tiny urn oh. over here. Basalt. Okay. And it's the name of a stone, basically, right. where you have also some gorgeous details, like, for instance, the sign left by a uh, chariot wheel, right? Oh, yes. So, uh, when I say that Romans invented streets, I didn't mean that they invented a path. 
they invented a street that could last, right? That could not get uh, flooded in winter and not get too dusty in the summer. So under here, there's a few layers of other smaller stones to guarantee a proper drainage of water and to prevent roots from growing, right? And the vegetation to take over, okay? So basically, you are literally experiencing two of the major ancient Roman uh, invention. And over there, what you guys are seeing is what we can definitely uh, understand as a gorgeous uh, fresco that makes us think that the family was quite wealthy. So if you pair a very rare mosaic that was not so common in the villas of Rome and these gorgeous, this is I guess the tip of the iceberg of what still needs to be cleaned because a lot of the stone-like um, rocks that you saw all around are a lot of them are just this little bit of the plaster it's still dirty right, right? so this is uh, still uh, today a technique used to paint uh, on the wall the reason why this is still here oh. is thanks to the technique mm -hmm. fresco technique uh, is the technique thanks to which you can paint on the wall and not throw the decoration you did after a few years so for this afternoon's activity we're going to be doing a little bit of art and who is going to be experiencing art for the first time today and we're going to be doing some pencil work so we're going to teach him how to use the rubber which will be found at the end of the pencil and um, <laughs> using the tip and we're going to go through a few techniques to see what he can produce and we'll take a look at his work at the end. Good introduction. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so sorry, that was so funny. Human nature and our, and our internal garden that needs to flourish, especially with art and creatively and expressing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's going to be me next. So, we're going to do this. Because okay. it's the first thing that you have to do if you're going to then flourish. And a new page? A new page. Yeah, new page. Yes. Love it. So start making these. They're called. It's a, yeah, it's a lemniscate. Lemniscate. It's a mathematical equation. So again, we are trying to harness time and to capture it with numbers and with um, man made uh, constructs. But it's. Small <laughs> <laughs> ones or big ones? Lovely. Like, oh, so, so how do you do it? And tiny little ones, one on top of the other. Perfetto. Bellissimo, piccini, piccini, picciò. Moments in time, time, seconds. <laughs> Good evening, I've just got back to the hotel after what has been quite an eventful day. We've had some incredible access to some Roman ruins as well as visiting the artist in the morning. And then following on from that, we then went and visited the private residence of the ambassador of the Order of Malta, where we enjoyed some beautiful lunch, which I was unable to share or show you anything from within inside the building because of course it was a residence but the food was amazing you just have to trust me on that and the interior decor was just opulent beautiful and cared for and it had a nice homely feel to the place as well considering there was probably about 50 of us in there. We were hosted by the ambassador himself, Zanar di Landi and his wife. And then following on from that, we went to another private residency, so private I was unable to share you the location, the name, or the people, the landlord that owned the property, but it was truly a special treat. And that is where I think I documented the incredible discovery of the first century ruins that were excavated out and of course during that excavation they found some incredible artifacts including that wonderful mosaic floor which was just spectacular and I think that there's actually a lot more information on that than I've shared with you here today. Truly special experience and I think that being able to see these things in person is just spectacular. We then followed on with a art class where we got a little bit creative and we played on time which of course links back to Panerai and the watch. We had some teas and coffees and cakes and then we jumped in the car and we're here right now because this evening we're about to get dressed up, ready to head out for dinner. And it's gonna be in a special location tonight. We're gonna to be heading to the home of the Italian military navy, the military of defense, where I think that we're gonna be having some talks from a spokesperson representing the military and also just exploring and discovering the incredible building that is going to be hosted in. I've had a little look online, it looks fantastic. So I'm not sure where we're going to be going, or what we're gonna be able to see, but of course, I'll take you along for the journey 
and I'll document that with you because we are allowed to film in there this evening, which is great. So anyway, I'm gonna get myself suited and booted for the occasion and I'll check back in with you when I'm ready. So as you can see, we're all set, ready to go. We're running a little bit late, so I don't have much time to chat. So I'll see you at the Palazzo. We have arrived. By the entrance. Drinks reception is looking rather spectacular in the courtyard. Unreal. This is our start of this evening, which is by the way, artichoke. Wonderful room. This is a library I could get down with. Nice right, so next dish is out, looking good. So every evening we've came home, Pan and I have dropped a little something off on our beds and it's really lovely to come back to the hotel room. And today, or well this evening should I say, but this wonderful photo that was taken on our Vespa tour on day one. How cool is that? How do they do it so quickly? And then nice note, which we'll read in a second. Certificate of achievement. <laughs> yeah, it looks like we've got a lovely book, which I'd have to deep dive into, no pun intended. That's so cool. We'll take a look at that but anyway it's currently approaching midnight and tomorrow we have a very early start we're going to be getting up at 4 a.m so i'm only gonna get a few hours sleep this evening but it's going to be worth it because tomorrow morning we have a special trip to the vatican and we're going to be going so early i believe to miss the crowds and to discover the vatican in a very unique way so i'm going to get some shut eye and i'll catch up with you in the morning well, it's our final morning here in Rome and I unapologetically this morning have done a face mask to try to uh, wake myself up as much as possible. It's actually currently half five in the morning but we've been up since probably around about 4am. So we're just about to head to do our Vatican tour and first things first. We have just arrived and as you can see it's still dark outside but we're just about to head inside and enter the state that is the Vatican. The unlocking of the Vatican, door number one ticked off the list. It's such a lovely time to be up in the morning isn't it just before sunrise. Well, this is our group and we have this place all to ourselves. Morning, Jack. Hello, welcome <laughs> to my house. <laughs> I would like to have the privilege to introduce you. We can say that is the second important man inside the Vatican. You can easily understand who is the first one. 2,697 keys. Huh? Wow. You can see all the there. The moon on the left, unreal. It's the oldest key that we have inside the museum. It's the number 401 and dates back to the 1770. And slowly passing through, opening and unlocking the doors ahead of what's set to be a very busy day here in the Vatican. 
think it's the third largest museum in the world. This courtyard, unreal. Oh. We've decided to go anti-clockwise this morning. We're currently in the gallery and it is absolutely spectacular in here. There's so much to take in, but we must move on. Yeah, no, wait, wait, because we need to switch on the light. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Wow. Ta -da. Wow. That is lengthy. So we're currently in the gallery of maps. This is a spectacular space. Normally thousands of people walking through here at any one time. It's just a treat to have it today for ourselves. So we're stepping through time into the Renaissance. And this particular room was one of Raphael's first works. And I have to say, it is breathtaking. There's so much detail, so much to look at. Wonderful. Show us the key, show us the key. The key master from the Matrix. The fifth in shuffle is going to open for us. I don't want to swim in the right hand. This is the trick. Now the handle. Now the handle. Okay. Good. Lovely. Well done. Whoa. It's dark inside. It's really dark. Well, the tour is over. We have finished our morning at the Vatican. What an experience it was. Well, the doors have opened, but we have one more treat in store, and we are about to head up to a forbidden place to the rooftop. Wow, that is the view. Oh my goodness me. Oh wow guys, look at that. That is incredible. Amazing. So obviously we were just down there having lunch, or breakfast should I say. <laughs> Feels like it could have been lunch. Unreal. Well, welcome ladies and gentlemen to St. Peter's, the largest Christian church in the world, purposefully designed to accommodate all of the churches within it. And there are actually markers on the ground that will tell you the distance from the altar to the full length of the church in question. So here you can see we have the Cathedral of California, which from the altar would finish here in size. So as you can see, this runs a fair way back from that. Very cool design. So underneath the scaffolding just down here, they discovered a red stone which had written on it, Peter is here. And so because of the significance of this location, and of course, the writing, they've made the conclusion that this could of course be St. Peter, even though it doesn't say St. Peter. I think this is the most spectacular light striking this sculpture. 
How epic does that look? So that building up there, second window in with a white threshold across is where the Pope normally comes and addresses people that are standing in the square down here. And we think the white smoke comes up from the Yes, from the chapel, the smoke comes up. And there we have it in all its glory. Well, I've come back to the hotel a little bit sleepy eyed, I know, but what an incredible trip here in Rome. It's definitely up there as one of my favorite destinations to visit. Panerai absolutely spoils us. I feel very privileged to have experienced and had the access here in Rome that I did on the first time I ever visited. So as always, I hope you have enjoyed this week's video and I'll leave all the relevant links in the description box down below. And I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday at 5 p.m. Take care.